Brown, the top Democrat on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Bob Menendez. Senator, thanks for coming in. Good to be with you, Kate. From what I have seen, you left the Iran briefing skeptical and no more won over, if you will. Do you agree with Mike Lee when he, Republican Mike Lee, when he came out to say it was the worst briefing he'd ever received? He called it insulting and deme he even called it an unmitigated disaster this morning on NPR. Are you going that far? Well, look, you know, to the extent that members went in to get answers to critical questions uh, and, and didn't get them, the answer would be yes. I went in with three specific questions, which I got to ask. Number one, what was the specific intelligence to lead you to the belief that there was an imminent threat? Two, what was the specific intelligence in terms of to the nature of the threat? What were the targets? And three, what was the specific intelligence that led you to believe that eliminating Soleimani alone, singularly, would eliminate the threat? And the answer is, after pressing them really hard, I got no substantive answers to those three critical questions. Some of the reasoning, at least according to the Vice President Mike Pence, he was asked about that this morning, why they couldn't give more, if you will. Here's what he said. We have to protect sources and methods, and so there's only a certain amount that we can share with every member of Congress. But, uh, but those of us who have seen all the evidence know that there is a compelling case of an imminent threat. Senator, do you accept that some of the intelligence is too sensitive for you all to see? I don't accept that the intelligence community cannot distill the critical intelligence uh, away from the sources and methods in a way that can be conveyed to Congress. I don't accept that. Otherwise, we have to rely on faith. And we see that faith for some. Uh, years ago, uh, you know, in Iraq, where we were told that there were weapons of mass destruction, uh, was an ill-placed fate. I didn't place my faith in that. I did my due diligence on intelligence. I voted against the war in Iraq, but it taught me a lesson. You just cannot accept the word of any administration, this or any other one. You have to verify for yourself. I believe they can distill the intelligence in a way that can be convincing if they have it, uh, but that doesn't doesn't ultimately betray sources and methods. Speaker Pelosi sidestepped a question on um, if she received, uh, if she's convinced from the more in-depth briefing she's received. Have you spoken to Pelosi, Schumer, Adam Schiff, or even Mark Warner, any of the Democrats on the Gang of Eight who've received that deeper briefing on Iran? Where are they on this? Do they say they're convinced? Well, uh, I have spoken to one or two of them, uh, and of course the, they're not free to give the same in-depth briefing that they got as a gang of eight. But do but you agree that I they could say, I, do, I am convinced of an imminent threat? Yeah, and, and I, I think that my takeaway from my conversation with them is that they're, they're not convinced uh, that, number one, that uniquely eliminating Soleimani was the solution to any potential threat. And the question of imminency is a question of definition that the administration seems to have a broad definition of. Um, Republican Congressman Doug Collins, he's the top Republican on House Judiciary, he said something last night um, that I want to ask you about asked about the Democrats' response to the killing of Soleimani. Here's what he said. Let me play it for you. They're in love with terrorists. We see that. They, they mourn Soleimani more than they mourn our Gold Star families who are the ones who suffered under Amazing. Soleimani. That's a problem. Do you want to respond to that? Yeah, it's pretty outrageous. No one mourns the death of Soleimani. Uh, what we are concerned about is the risk to greater American lives, including those of our men and women uh, in uniform uh, in Iraq and in the region. Our concern is for them, first and foremost. Our concern is for the national security of the United States. And it's pretty outrageous uh, for anyone to suggest uh, that uh, we uh, are coddling, uh, you know, uh, those who uh, are terrorists. I mean, it was uh, uh, Barack Obama who took out Osama bin Laden. Uh, and many of us have supported the administration's resources uh, in their war against terror. So, uh, you know, th this is where we turn from patriotism to partisanship. Uh, and I believe that these moments on questions of war and peace and national security are moments of patriotism, not partisanship.
Senator, on impeachment, there's a growing number of Democrats saying it's time for Pelosi to send the articles of impeachment over, including Senator Manchin, Senator Murphy. And just this morning, the chair of House Armed Services, Adam Smith, he told John Berman that he also thought it was time to hand him over, though he did now he does now say he misspoke when he said that repeatedly. You've given Pelosi space here up to now. What do you say to Democrats who say it's time? Well, listen, each member has to make his own judgment. Uh, I trust Speaker Pelosi uh, to send over the articles of impeachment at the appropriate time. I don't think there's going to be a lot more time involved. Uh, think about uh, what the House Do you think House you're going to have a trial through. started by next week? Well, that, that will depend upon a lot of things. So, number one, sending over the articles of impeachment and then passing a resolution that uh, the majority leader wants to pass. That will be amendable. Uh, so whether or not we actually start a trial next week or start the process next week, it's possible. It would all depend when the uh, articles are sent over. But look, the result of having waited has now shown us a whole series of emails that have come to light through uh, FOIA requests, public information requests, the comments of uh, Ambassador Bolton that he's ready to testify before the Senate, although not before the House. I mean, this continues the drum of what most Americans believe, that a fair trial involves witnesses and documents. No American who has ever served on a jury or been involved in any action, civil or otherwise, under, uh, knows that, uh, every American, I should say, knows that as a fair trial, a trial involves witnesses and documents. Senator, thanks for coming in. Thank you.